now representing LFO and, and carrying on this amazing legacy as you tour with O-Town. What's it been like, Brad, touring with them? I didn't really know what the fans would think because you know, they can very easily be like, yo, what are you, what are you doing up there? You know, your boys are gone. Like, just call it a day. But instead, they've been so gracious to me. Thank, they thank me. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for keeping the legacy alive. It's been a dream come true to see you. And this has been extraordinarily humbling. And um, it's just an amazing experience. And obviously being with O-Town, we've developed such a great bond, such a deep love and friendship. It's like the closest thing I'll ever have to to band members again. So, um, you know, I, I, I shake my head a lot, like what on earth is happening here? But, you know, the LFO story, the whole story is kind of a tragic story. Um, and at some point in our lives, when we're dealing with adversity, we have to choose the light or the darkness. And so I was dark for a while, but, you know, I found the light and I try to be a light in the darkness and, and try to honor Rich and honor Devin, nurture the legacy and, and, and bring the fans back to a simpler time. I want you to take me to one of those cherished memories. That, you know, go back to the 90s, go back to the 2000s when you all are touring and probably laughing in the tour bus or something happened. You know, there's always there's always a lot of good memories, especially, um, you know, Rich was one of the funniest people you would ever meet. Um, one memory that really sticks out is we were we were on tour, maybe maybe the year 2000. We had two tour buses, you know, we had we had one for us and one for our band and crew. And I don't know where we were. It could have been the middle of Tennessee or West Virginia somewhere. And we stopped at a Waffle House to eat. And um, we just came in there and we took over the whole Waffle House. Like we we were cooking. We were we were uh, taking money. We were taking orders. You know, our, our, our keyboard player and Mike Caputo were like, you know, flipping eggs. You know what I mean? I was serving tables. And actually, I, I got it on video and I, I posted a video on YouTube a long, long time ago of, uh, of that experience. But that was one of the funny experiences um, that, that we ever had on tour, just that whole Wapa House experience. All of us have gone through an experience where we're watching somebody we love pass away, right? And so my experience is not that much different than yours or somebody watching this. What makes my experience interesting to some folks is the fact that I'm in LFO and two of those guys are gone, you know what I mean? And so I sometimes feel guilty when people give me so much love and, and apologies for what I've lost. And I try to explain, well, we've all lost, you know what I mean? Um, but I can take the attention that comes from it and try to you know, bring some light into how you heal from these kind of things and, and what happens when you get, go into the darkness, you know? Cause after Devin died, I was, it was like somebody pulled a, a hood over my eyes and, and I just couldn't find joy in anything. At the time, I have six kids now, but I had five kids at the time and I just could not find joy anywhere. And so my wife's like, you gotta do something, you know? And so I think a lot of us are not really vulnerable enough to admit when we need help, especially in men. You know, we're so focused on our physical health. Um, we work out, we try to eat right. Uh, but the mental health is something that less of a stigma today than maybe 10 years ago, but it's still something that I think some people are uncomfortable to admit. So, you know, I went to my primary, he gave me this questionnaire and like immediately was like, all right, you're going to the psychiatrist. Like you, you, you need something. And so I did that and I met with my pastor and I tried to work out I tried to eat better and I tried to make some music and hang out with friends and, and, and I got through that, but I, I don't think I could have done it on my own. And so if my story helps other folks to realize, you know, hey, you know what, sometimes I have to be vulnerable enough to say I need help, then then uh, I guess what I'm doing is important. You can't be you can't be running 100 percent all the time. You, you know, downtime is important. So it's easier said than done in today's world. And for those who have, you know, tough jobs or like myself with big families, you know, there's not a whole lot of time for it, but it is important to for self-help and to take care of yourself the best you can. And it's it's an ongoing uh, process for me, um, but you know, I'm, I think I'm doing okay.